Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about Magia Linux. What is Magia, you may ask? Well, Magia is a fork of Mandriva. Uh, it is based off of, well, Magia is a Greek word that means enchantment, fascination, and glamour. So uh, I think that basically what they're trying to say is that you're going to be razzled and dazzled by Magia. It uses your standard desktops, you know, your KDE, GNOME, and XFCE. However, though, as with many other distributions, you can install alternative desktops such as tiling window managers like i3, you know, uh, floating window manager like OpenBox, ICE window manager, you know, all those kind of guys. Those guys that are commonly, you know, bigger and maintained dis desktop environments are out there as well. It uses the DNF package manager. So in if you've used Fedora, uh, you are going to be very familiar on how to use this package manager from the terminal. It does have a graphical user interface for it as well. So, uh, you know, we can, we can definitely uh, take a look at that. We'll take a look at that here in just a second when we go and check it out. So I just wanted to say that uh, Magia, from what I've known and what I've seen of it, is pretty, pretty, pretty actually clean, a clean um, distribution. So let's go ahead and pop pop in and, and let's, you know, dive right into it and take a look. Okay, so when you first boot into Magia, this is what you're greeted with. You have an actual uh, welcome window that comes to it. Now, this welcome window is pretty awesome because it's got a place where you can go read on release notes, of course. You know, it's got uh, community center as well, which is like, you know, I guess like maybe forums. I'll click on it and open it up and see what it looks like. Oh, it's places it's it's basically a panel where you can go to and see new things like they're they're announcing their magia 9 alpha is out um their blog is here in english uh how to contribute you know toolboxes and stuff like that so i mean there's lots of um and also their location down here in the bottom bottom left for irc channel forums and blogs and stuff like that so they it just basically is a a place for you to go to be part of their community and get a hold of their different sections and aspects of their Magia community. That's actually pretty nice. So uh, you have ways of contributing and also, do, you know, donations. Of course, you can join them. You can file a bug report on it. So, I mean, that that's it's it's typical run of the mill, beautiful. I like the minimalistic view of this welcome center because normally most welcome centers have, you know, a lot that's compiled there into it. And so... I mean, it's pretty nice. Of course, you got buttons at the top for the welcome. Then you got you can adjust your media sources from core, non-free to tainted, which means there are packages and audio codecs that are needed for certain multimedia files, you know, that may infringe on the patents or copyright laws of certain countries. So basically, they're the non-free or the, the actual proprietary ones. You got back ports and, of course, you got notes. So for update, you click here to check it for system updates. Uh, MCC. Uh, is here for your media uh, Magia control center, which we'll take a look at that in a minute to install different software. You have the RPM Drake, you have DNF Dragora as well, which is the front end GUIs. Like if we click, click on it, oh wait. And we'll type in my password and here we are, DNF Dragora. And this is what their package manager looks like. The front end for it. So, I mean, it's it's pretty nice. It's it's a front end graphical user interface for DNF is what it is, uh, kind of similar to uh, the Synaptic Package Manager. Uh, for applications here, uh, these are things that that you can install. Common ones that are you know featured ones. You got games, internet, video, audio, office, graphic stuff, system, and programming. What I will tell you is they are not making it difficult at all to install any kind of software. From this built into their, you know, welcome menu to the actual DNF Dragora, uh, the package manager GUI, um, that kind of stuff. So, and then this will tell you your configuration. Obviously, you're running with GA8, which kernel. You know, the desktop is the GNOME Wayland session. Uh, it even gives you a user ID, which is something different that, that I wasn't aware, you know, that it did that, but it does. 
and then um, I'm connected to the network. Uh, I, I guess if I click about, it tells me, oh, the release 2.16 and the actual authors of this distribution. So, uh, And then more information is just that. That's basically the same as the beginning to the welcome. <laughs> so uh, if you need to find any more than what they already know, sh initially showed you in the welcome, then, you know, that's it. You know, I mean, that's what it started off as. It goes to there. So anyhow, that's a look at the welcome page. Now, this is the about which I already went over, which we just saw. Now, this is using a the GNOME version. Uh, there's, like I said, the other one is a KDE version that you can download and the XFCE. Uh, any other desktops that you would like, you have to install through DNF Dragora. Now, it's a modified GNOME version. As you can see, the activities uh, usually pops up along the bottom, but this one's actually on the left-hand side, and your uh, virtual desktops are over here on the on the right, which pop out. So that's a little bit different, but other than that, I mean, aesthetically, it's pretty nice. Uh, I'm kind of fond on that, I, you know, with for real estate, you know, with large monitors, that's fine. Uh, smaller monitors, that may be kind of annoying. I'm pretty sure that through, if you download and install the GNOME, the gnome tweaks and all those other little things that you could download in gnome to help you customize it you can do that so either way there is where that's located at and on it they have their web browser they have their mail client they have their messaging client then they also have their audio player they have picture viewer and they have libre office pinned as your favorites file managers and documents as well and then the welcome the, the control center now this is what i think you don't you don't find a lot of control centers in linux distributions so this is kind of awesome that they have this embedded i'm, I'm kind of a fan of control centers uh, because it puts everything there at your in one area um, kde has that in their system settings so to speak but but for the most part you know, this really is really nice. So let's open it up and take a look at it. Of course, because you're going to be able to modify things that are going to be, you know, system level, you need to give it root permission. So, and what you're met with is this. Now, I will say that they might should have made these. It's beautiful in this left panel, but they might have added a little bit different color to that text other than the white, so to speak. Maybe not maybe black might have been nice you know that when you hover on it it does it stays the same you know the transparency goes away but it would have been it would have been nice if they if they made that black because it kind of gets lost especially in the middle here where network and you know hardware and system are you know it kind of gets lost because of all the other stuff going on in the background so i mean that might be a note to the authors that they might you know take a look at it's small but that's my only knock so far uh, for software management tab here you have Install and remove software once again update your system configure updates frequency in other words if you click on that you can adjust exactly how frequent you check for updates and actually allow them to happen so I mean that's pretty nice uh, and configure media sources and installs this is where you can configure which repos you're 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 actually including your PPAs you wouldn't in if you would in you know Debian or whatever. But either, either way, uh, this is this is pretty nice too as well. Uh, under the hardware, of course, this is where you can browse and configure your hardware. You can do your sound configuration. We'll click on that just to give you an example. You can use Pulse Audio, Glitch Free Mode, any troubleshooting under Advanced. Um, you can reset the sound mixer, default values, all that good stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's pretty nice. Uh, you can configure your graphics, configure 3D desktop. So you can do no 3D or you can enable Compiz which is an old school thing, but it, you can do that there, which is already enabled. Um, you can set up graphical servers. Um, you can change whatever you want to do here. You can also change your resolutions, all that good stuff. I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. Uh, for configure your mouse, of course, your keyboard and mouse, there's that. And then printer scanning, you can do that. And then others for like a, a, a UPS or a battery backup system, you can do that as well. You can actually set up a scanner. That's interesting. Uh, for network, of course, it's got all your your different things that you can do with your network connection from your network center to setting up, you know, you know, new uh, interfaces. 
you know, like ADSL, LANs, or whatever. Uh, you can remove a connection. You can do proxies. You can figure VPNs right here, manage different proxies. I mean, there's all kinds of stuff, man. Pretty awesome. Under the system tab, you can do authentication, manage your system services that are that are enabled or running. If we click on that, these you can set like to, to come on on boot. Uh, these, you know, or to stop them, start them, whatever you want to do, you know, all kinds of cool stuff. You know, I mean, different services, of course, that they're running. You can check. Pretty simple, straightforward. Manage and manage, add and remove font. So this is your font manager right here. Localization is you can change your date and time. Manage your localization for your system. Uh, administration tools. Administration tools. Here's your logs, your system logs. You can open console as an administrator here, or obviously you can simply open up a terminal and type in su and then you become root user so that's pretty easy to do uh manage users on your system you could add users here you could input import windows documents and settings uh, and you can actually configure snapshots so it's got snapper installed right out the box that's very nice as far as network sharing of course this is where you can do your samba and you know drives and stuff like that you know you can figure out you know nfs drives and shares and web dab shares you can do all that good stuff here so i mean it's pretty pretty up to date on technology of stuff that's installed already for your local disk tab of course it's going to let you run your system partitioner and all that good stuff manage your disk partitions all that good stuff shared partitions under the security tab you can configure your system security permissions and, and audit it you can set up your personal firewall you can set up an ipv6 personal firewall there's you know configure authentication from agia tools advanced setup for network interfaces as well and firewalls and of course your parental controls are buried here for boot this is going to let you customize stuff for boot like set up you know auto login update set up a system boot or, or, or uh, display manager as well uh, if you click on it it's by fault using the gnome desktop or display manager but you could also enable the x display manager as well here and of course if you install like light dm or sddm i'm sure those entries will be written here and you could adjust them and set them to to be used so uh, it's it's a pretty nice control center that being said but the biggest pro to this for anybody who's new to linux and that's where i'm looking at it as is a new to linux user that i would recommend this already off the bat because of that easy to install comes set up with a lot of stuff in it for you already pretty well customized in a nice way uh, although i would definitely install gnome tweaks after a while and maybe move the 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 activities bar down to the bottom where it's you know customarily normally at but other than that i mean those are and the the welcome the welcome center thing for the navigator the control center uh navigation buttons and the pane and the left pane would be the text change the color would be the one things i would change but other than that it's a very nice distribution now the top panel of course is the same as any in any gnome where you've got the actual activities on the left you got the time and date in the middle when you click on it, it does that you can tell you what your events are or whatever or you can also put it on if you click on it of course you got the do not disturb button on the bottom left and your right hand panel you've got would be your system tray uh but it's got your power session your volume manager only and if you click this little the little drop down this gets you to you know for settings if you want to go to settings it takes you to your settings which are your typical gnome settings that are available to you you know i mean uh power displays you can change your resolution here as well uh scaling as well scaling let's apply wow revert changing we're going to change that back i mean you got to be blind to to, to need 200 percent scaling i wish you could scale like you know from 50 to 175 to 100 to 120 you know whatever but i'm sure you know as you get further along the line, there are commands that you can implement to do that. So uh, you can learn how to do that. Of course, you can you know adjust pretty much any and everything through here. This is where you're at. So to do any theming or anything like that, you have to install GNOME tweaks. So, but uh, at any instance, that's your settings manager right there. Uh, and of course, you've got you can lock your screen and you can log in and log out through here or turn off. It gives you your power session. Suspend, restart, power off, of course. So let's go ahead and look and see what is all installed. So we're going to show the application. So you have Archive Manager, Calculator, uh, Cheese, Clocks, Compiz, Compiz Settings, um, Dasher, DNF Config, your Document Viewer, which is your PDF Viewer, Documents, which I don't know if it has LibreOffice installed, which it does. It does have LibreOffice installed, so you could use LibreWriter as well. 
um, the control center, the Magia Welcome for music. It's got no music player. You got your network control center, your power statistics, printing planner, which is your you know day planner that's based you know from GNOME. Uh, let's see, planner. Yep, it's for the GNOME desktop, and it's point zero. 0.14.6 version so that's i believe their latest version uh, i don't use gnome a lot although i will tell you gnome has come a very long way very long way it's actually more responsive it's faster it's it's wonderful actually uh it's got gimp installed uh it's got the gda browser as well uh gda control center or disk access controller so uh, it's pretty cool um, it's got, it's got a lot of little bells and whistles already installed, which is, which is pretty nice. I mean, it's not a bare bones gnome desktop at all in, in any shape or form. Oh, well, I didn't mean to click on that. Dang it. Um, it's got Inkscape as well installed. Uh, it has Polari. Um, it has screenshot in here. It's got the Pavu control. Uh, the pulse audio preferences as well. You can do regional settings, parental controls, which I showed you before. They've already, they put that in. Uh, it's got the GNOME terminal. It's got the GNOME sound recorder. It's got sound juicer, shot. Well, here's your tweaks right here. So it does have a GNOME tweaks already installed uh, for appearance. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Adwita Dark. There it is. Nice. Uh, for icon, we've got Adwita, high color contrast. For the shell, it doesn't have anything at all that you can change for different shells. It's got the standard bash shell, probably. So anyhow, uh, you can implement extensions here, fonts, keyboard and mouse, startup applications. You can uh, move the bar, I believe. Oh, no, this tells you what you can put on it. Uh, Windows titles, uh, of course, and borders. Uh, windows, workspaces. You can add workspaces and, like, you know, like, there comes with, I think, four. Yeah, it comes with four already. So, I mean, uh, there's all kinds of different tweaks. Like I said, GNOME Tweaks is just that. It, it allows you to tweak um, what it is that you want uh, it to look like. Um, and it's also got video player, the GNOME video player. It's got the little weather widget. And this is a, a little look, look at my forecast for today. And forecast, future forecast is not available right yet so i guess it's still populating i don't know either way this is a look at gnome uh the uh the customized gnome uh for magia uh it's actually pretty nice i i you know it's it's very nice it's there's magia is impressing you know because it's clean neat very well-rounded Put together it has the control center which is great for you coming you know anybody who's not familiar with gnome and how to use gnome as well as new to linux users it gives them that kind of feel of the uh, control center for windows so they've taken that aspect they put it in there uh i do like that because it's at one location for a lot of the major things that you need to do um the welcome menu of course uh you know with the multiple tabs there for doing many different things like like i said there's no way you cannot install an application on here that you need or a program that you need because there's several different methods to, to do it that they've implemented here. Uh, it's really a nice, clean desktop. Is it the most beautiful version of a distribution out there? It's pretty, but it's not the most beautiful. No, it's, it's nice. It's clean. It's neat. Of course, that's the purpose of Linux is to be able to customize it. So once you learn how to do that and you get comfortable in using it, if you're new to Linux, then you can look forward to that. If you're already a seasoned veteran then or a seasoned user, then go ahead and start customizing away. But as far as a, a base core distribution to get started with, this I put this one up there with with like your Linux Mints, your MX Linuxes, you know, those kind of guys. Yeah, it's definitely a distribution worth looking at. And if you're a distro hopper looking for something new to try, give this one a spin. See what you do. Guys. If you use Magia and you think uh, that I forgot or you feel that I forgot to tell somebody something about it, please go ahead and leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video, please. It helps me out in the algorithm with YouTube. And you guys, thanks for, for supporting the channel. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, you guys keep doing what you guys do. Y'all keep on Linuxing and have a great day.